Alrighty everybody, welcome to a new episode of Die Wolf 20 here on the Primus server and I bet you weren't expecting to see that at the beginning of the episode. Not bad, eh? I've gone a little bit crazy on this server for a while. Now we've had man as many a tale to tell about the last few days, um, but I have a lot of stuff to explain to you. Um, <laughs> but first look at the beauty. Let me see if I can get down a little bit better. I don't think there's a decent view of this anymore. You can see it's sucking up all the power it can. This occasionally goes red. Oh, here we go. So that's 2,560 RF being sucked up by these lasers, and it just about maxes out the connection, which is pretty damn cool. Um, if I jump into the middle, actually, and I can show you the beauty from here. Look at him go. Oh, man, it's crazy cool. It's crazy, crazy cool. Now, this entire system, <laughs> all this does, really, is collect Britannia flowers and convert them into corresponding dye and that's it and then I'm going to use these with um, the clay production stuff which we're going to work on today after I've explained how all of this stuff works um, to produce colored blocks of clay and that's going to be finally setting up an automated collection of stuff for my build Whew. so yeah colorful clay buildings coming up in god knows when I'm not entirely sure we shall see so what I'll do is let's explain this in its entirety and I think we're going to start with the beginning so if I get through here Turn the whole system off, let it all calm down for a second because there's no need to run it right now. Yeah. Look at it, it's just chucking out the stuff, it's so cool. So there's a buffer on these lasers as they're slowly dying out of power now. You can see it all slowly turn off, there we go. Chunks out and everything finishes. Right, so this is cool and I'm going to explain that in two seconds, but we're going to have to start with something <laughs> all the way down here. So, originally what the plan was, or the plan has been, and what I have been working on, is there's a particular flower in Britannia that um, I do have somewhere, I think it's in the house, um, that I was placing into the middle section here and it would feed off the manor produced by whatever setup I had over here. Now you can see I've taken down all of the clay stuff um, and that's for a good reason because it was crap really. Um, I needed to move it and I needed to work on some better automated manor feeding system, which I'll get to in a minute. So this thing would produce flowers um, like so. And what I had above here and connecting to this chest ultimately was a collection of um, striped pipes using the autarctic gates just to pull up anything that was underneath them but that turned out to be a bit of a pain in the butt I had this entire area covered massive massive area then I cut it down to like a three by three or a four by no, a five by five uh, and that's what I was running it at for a while because it would just cause a lot of like frame drops people would suffer when they came here they'd suffer a lot so I took it all down but we did collect a hell of a lot of plants in the meantime so it's not too bad and these can actually be collected with another item I have on me so if, for instance I turn my magnet on and I pull out this horn of the wild this thing is freaking cool you can stand in the middle of this boom and then with the magnet on you just collect up all of the stuff so if I do need bits and bobs I can easily produce some extra flowers for the time being oh I seem to have a, I do have a completely full inventory Oh dear, uh, right, let's chuck some flowers in there. <laughs> oh, what are the odds? What are the odds that my backpack is absolutely full of crap? It's all good though, it's all necessary for today. Right, let's do that, and I shall throw my horn back in there for now. We can get rid of those flowers later on. So yeah, these flowers would then get collected and processed by the machinery above. So, uh, let's do the machinery first, because we were looking at it. They would end up in this box, and this is where things instantly got pretty cool, as far as I was concerned. We have these Emzulai pipes, now these puppies can drag out specific items and then they can also colour them by code. So what I did was I matched every colour or every flower colour with its actual colour in the paint spectrum that we've got available to us. So it was just a case of, you know, matching up. I just threw flowers in. So each one of these is responsible for, oops, is responsible for four different flowers. There's 16 of them. So four of these pipes pulls out every single flower and paints them their respective colour as they come through. Really freaking cool. What I noticed, I think it was, I think it was Covert Jaguar's video from ages ago. He was using these gates to do it and he had a crazy, well, he had the gate exactly like this, but what he was doing was saying that uh, when he was receiving a signal, it would activate the blue extraction pipe and it would pulse and then it would activate the green one and it would pulse on a different signal. And I was like, well, I haven't got enough gates for this. Maybe I need a diamond gate. Possibly a diamond gate would have done this. I don't know. But what I did instead was I said, when a redstone signal is off, activate all the, um, different colors on the pipe and then I just put a single basic autarkic gate thingy with an energy pulsar on it which also is triggered on a non-signal so this is constantly pulling and this is activating all the gates so as soon as a flower goes in here actually I could have so shown you that look at that what a fool so if I get a few of these out 
like so and I put them in here real quick uh, like so we should see them all getting pulled out of different gates so there we go and they're all getting painted their colors whites browns what we've got over here yellows are going up there's a green and all sorts and then they'd all filter off and zip around these pipes now I don't know if any of them are gonna make it all the way around but you might see a few there we go just a couple flying past there as well so what happens is the flowers would come up along the gold pipes they would get pushed along the edge here now this gonna get a bit tricky now I think this sojourn sash oh my god it's been so useful for this so what you can see here is the golden pipe is connected to a whole bunch of different colored um, dazzle eye pipes and each one of them is just responsible for throwing whichever color they are in into the corresponding barrel and they go all the way around and loop uh, all the way down to the other side and then it sort of fills off to a dead end everything that goes through the system will get placed somewhere i should place an overflow chest right at the end there just in case something does go through that doesn't get processed but me living on the edge you know <laughs> so down here what i'll do is i'll explain one of these systems and i can do one at this end because it's the easiest so we have see the lime greens go into this chest here we have a gate here that is only activated when work is done. Now this kind of works, kind of works, kind of doesn't. It sometimes gets a little bit screwy with the system. But the idea is, is that when this doesn't have anything left to do, it pulses for some pulsars and it will just pull out a couple of plants and then place them in here and it will start working again, at which point this gets turned off. Nice. When this is finished, producing its mystical lime petals, for instance, it passes on to this table which in then has the pestle and mortar. And this is awesome that I can actually use this as a part of the advanced crafting table. It doesn't work in the, oops, sorry, smack my mic, in the auto crafting um, table. What's that called? Yeah, I think the auto crafting table. You can't use the pestle and mortar, but you can in the advanced crafting table. So that's brilliant. So combining this, that produces floral lime powder. And this is just pulsing as long as this chest has some room in it. So as long as this is requesting, it will actually just try and pull out anything that gets produced. And that's it, times 16 and you have a system that will process every single color flower into its corresponding um, dye. So there, that's great. That's the entire system at this point. Um, this hole in the middle is actually a travel anchor. Look at that. Da, 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 a bit weird. Um, so that's this, and that will produce this, and that's that. And yes, English could. Well done, Shalom. Um, what I'll go and do is I'll explain to you what's going on down here. Now, firstly, uh, we've had a load of server server hassles. Our world broke. Something corrupted. A chunk went wrong. Very, very wrong indeed. And we're not entirely sure why. The current theory, it might be Enetbridge, I think it's called. I don't know. Something to do with converting RF to IC2 power uh, and vice versa or something anyhow. So we've disabled Enetbridge, I believe, for the time being um, for fear of it happening again. But um, yes, in thanks for fixing the server, essentially, me and Monkey Puzzle went on a bit of a mission trying to get it all done and it actually ended up being some MC edit madness and we had to go and destroy a chunk in Brink's base I believe which was really harsh um, but he's fixed it all he's on it Brink is back on form as per normal so in thanks for that cat dog popped over and he donated me this ever full urn and all this does was it thormic exploration which is awesome what this does is it just fills up any receptacle near it that's uh, you know wants water so that's pretty damn sweet i'm hoping this works with the witchery kettle as well because that'll be damn useful so thank you cat dog that's awesome and uh, you're welcome for fixing the server i guess <laughs> that's all cool right this beastie is what needs to be explained next i was very very happy with this this actually works surprisingly well ultimately now let me see if i can find myself a little bit of coal or charcoal oh i think i was cooking cooking some up i was hey, look at that. right so this was inspired by uh, what monkey puzzle did up there and I believe the key element to this which is this wooden pressure plate here was um, Aaron's suggestion so thanks to both of those guys for this I went and played with the design idea a little bit and came up with this ridiculousness based on build craft what are the odds so what this does if I place my coal in there is we have a switch up here and I'm particularly happy with this one piece of functionality of this we have an iron and gate here with a pulsar on it and we're saying if the red pipe signal is off, send a signal pulse, but you also need a blue pipe signal to be on to match that. So because it's an AND gate, both of these conditions have to be true in order to send for a single energy pulse. So at the moment it's not doing anything because the blue signal is off, which is my off switch here. And this is just an iron gate that's sending, you know, on a redstone signal, send a blue pipe signal Bloop, up there. So what the plan is, I've got to stop doing that. That's starting to annoy me, you know. So um, what happens is coal comes down here, it will shoot along, drop through this open crate which is fantastic because it just guarantees that it drops directly downwards 
hits the wooden pat uh, the plate here, which in turn activates this redstone signal, which means it resets the pulsar request for the single item. And then one of these five flowers will devour the coal, at which point the signal turns off, requests another piece of coal because this is turned on and the cycle repeats. So if I turn this on, we can see the whole thing working. My magnet is off, good. So there you go, one piece of coal has come out because it's requested a single pulsar. It drops down there. One of these flowers will consume it. Goes off again, requests another piece of coal. What I've discovered with this particular setup and the speed at which it does this, so we can see different flowers starting to activate now, so we've got these two. I found that five flowers pretty much causes this system to continually eat coal or charcoal. Because I mean, these last about 45 seconds each, and I'm guessing it's about at that amount of time. I think there's a couple of seconds gets lost here or there during this process. But you can see now we're on like the fifth one, I think. Let's have a look. I think that one at the back there needs to activate. Let's see. Is that one turned on? Yep, yeah, that's turned on. So now they're all active. That one drops for a second and gets eaten by another one and off it goes. So now we have a permanent cycle. So what I need to do is produce some serious amounts of charcoal if I want to use this particular method. Uh, I think these two flowers are hooked up to this one and these three are currently hooked up to this mana spreader. So there we go. And that's what I was using to feed um, both the clay for a little while as well as the flower generation under there. But this thing, I just I love this thing. So if you want to stop it, you can just turn the signal off. This no longer matters what signal this is receiving nothing more will get pulled because I've turned this item off and because that's true or false there's no single energy pulse going through so there we go on off turnable thingamabob for continually feeding a whole bunch of endo flames so this is actually a really cool setup I'm going to use this <clears throat> at the new base when I start building my botanical area there once we get on to doing it and this here was my initial my primary design for the whole setup so again exactly the same concept just stuff went up there and it was continually um pulling everything on a single gate pulse so as this would think but the as you, as you jump on this or as an item fell on this it would reset the system and do exactly the same as what it's doing on this side whoops take that call back um so there we go that's the power setup now this is all well and good but for the clay production this doesn't work because this depends on items dropping down and for the clay production we use the old vacuum chest so damn it i did it again <laughs> what i want to do is i'm going to use a different flower and I've seen cat dog do this and it's brilliant. Oh, there we go. Jaded Amaranthus is the flower that produces all the other flowers. Our Cleconia, obviously, from last time. And somewhere in here, there should be these guys, Thermalilies. Now, these will convert stuff like lava source into mana. And what I'm going to do is set up two of these with this collection here. The old floodgate, stack on top with a magma crucible and on top of that an extruder to generate... Um, lava for us that these will feed off of and that's what I'm going to use for the clay production and that's all going to go dang it that's all going to go up there so that's pretty cool now I didn't want to spend whoa whoo like a pro I didn't want to spend too much time um, setting up all of this again so what I'll do is I'm going to go off and build up this stuff again because we've seen the sag mill to produce sand so what I want to do up here is I want to get sand production going so we can continue the cook clay production my god blah, 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 blah. and i also want to get the um lava lilies going whatever they're called to uh, with this setup here so i'll come back to do that but i'll set this other one piece up first and i'll be right back with you wow my words are all over the place here blah, 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 blah. okay okie dokie so this is what i ended up with now and uh, yeah it's pretty it's pretty cool actually it's a lot more compact than i thought it would be i hadn't really thought about it oh there you go see that there's a signal being sent there it says give me some cobblestone and then it goes so and that turns off let's quickly go through this we've got the ignis extruder now this is some of the stuff my god my frames drop a lot now it's because everything's turned on of course yeah i need to possibly use a different power connector than what i'm using now so i can independently power what's going on up here from down there but meh, for now it's all good in fact i could probably let's have a look mm, three buckets of lava i could probably turn this off for the minute let's go do that actually because otherwise this is going to be a pain in it oh what a shot pain in the butt awesome right we'll let all of this settle down for a second turn it all off and i can explain this so we have the ignis extruder from down below which is where the clay production was before like i say i've brought the old uh, the clay collection here 111 stacks not bad let's get back on we're producing more um and this is producing cobblestone which is going into here um now this is where it got interesting the sag mill from ender io will accept uh oops not recipes will accept the input 
will pull it will actually pull from an adjacent inventory so that's really cool so it will suck out the um, cobblestone as it needs it and then that's just grinding it down into sand as before I've just noticed that we have hmm, gravel as well I might hmm, we might be able to fix that let's have a look I'll do that in a second let's oop oh, t-burp excuse me right we have a magma crucible up here this is a new addition to handle power in the new flowers and that's generating us lava from the cobblestone now this will not pull directly from an inventory so I set this little diggery hoo here which is just a basic gate which says when there's space in this inventory send a redstone signal and it says when I get a redstone signal or a red wire signal sorry uh, give me a single pulse and it'll pull one item out of there so this is only ever processing one piece of stone in fact we can see it now it's nearly four. Oh my god this thing is slow oh, is it going to be able to finish it with the amount of power it has left looks like it go on my son go on do it let's have a look okay oh the dogs are growling interesting that'd be fun oh come on come on do this oh man I'm bored of waiting for it there we go so the cobblestone sucked up it sends a signal and requests a new one boom done oh blimey that was cool right let's move on next uh, oh, doo -doo -doo -doo. yes I wanted to get the clay thing downstairs um, sorry the um, puppy's barking now for some reason who knows she be crazy balls um so 15 stacks of gravel we'll grab that and we'll go up and oh if I can make it all the way well you can oh, what a loop that's pretty damn cool what a jump <laughs> so the, I'm wondering I'm wondering as a secondary thing if we place the gravel there and then we tell the sag mill that you can also output to whoops this side uh, I'm going to push into there as well is it doing it separately now? Is it smart enough to know? It is it smart enough to know what to push where? That is fantastic. Let's lock you in place as well. Let's get rid of the stuff for a second. You, I want locked. That's cool. So the sag mill is now. Ha ha ha! That is phenomenal. So there's the sand and the gravel gets separated. Brilliant. That is um, really freaking cool. Good. So this thing up here now. <laughs> this is where things get tricky. I'm pretty sure. He says. I'm pretty sure. Oh good, there's no actual output on this, cool, let's clear that. I'm pretty sure <laughs> that this thing is going to deploy lava downwards and only down. Now the question is how to contain it. I saw Akko doing something similar with his blood magic ritual <laughs> lava generator where he would use um, micro blocks just to contain it and I think... <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I think I'm going to try the same. <laughs> Let's go see if this works. I did manage to cut some up somewhere. Uh, the question is, again, whereabouts they ended up ultimately. I have no idea. It was nether brick. Um, what are they called? Little cuttings. Oh, God, I can't remember. The stuff you make. Micro blocks. Micro blocks. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, there we go. Nether brick micro blocks. So, what I'm thinking. <laughs> What I'm thinking is I might actually end up burning a whole load of stuff about now, but we shall see. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's only lava, ladies and gentlemen. What's the worst that could happen? I've, of course, now just cursed myself. Whoops. Give it a you. Oh, wow, you're a tough cookie. Tough cookie, eh? There we go. Um, let's place you there. So what am I... <laughs> see what I'm doing? You see what I mean? What do you reckon? Is this going to work? Should we find out? I think we should. <laughs> Oh, I might need a lever. I've got a lever. Wow. Can I actually slap that onto this thing? Oh, I can. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, God. That's going down. Okay, it's deployed into the dropper. That's staying there. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. <laughs> no, why did it spread there? Why, why? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, no, there's two. What do you mean there's two? Oh God, I've got nothing to block this with. Oh dear lordy lordy. Uh, source blocks, source blocks. Are we good? Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Quick, I've got some water somewhere. I don't, I don't have water. Uh, oh God, well, I hope you're enjoying this peeps. Ah, well, rubbish. I didn't expect it to do that, obviously. Wow. I've made a... oh god. Oh god, let's go see the damage. Oh, I can hear stuff burning. I'm getting stuck on things. Why is it not stopping? There's more lava source blocks. Oh... Oh... Uh. 
this was, in hindsight, a silly idea. <laughs> oh, is it? Oh, it's running out. Whew. Okay. Okay, well, I'm glad I put the off switch on there. So, it deploys... So <laughs> I don't know, it deploys out of the sides. Alrighty, so it can't come out the back. It can only... Actually, that is probably... Probably the only side it could have deployed from, to be honest. Should we try that again? Shall we? Should we try that again? I think we should try that again. Oh, man. Are you disappearing still? Yeah, you're disappearing still. Good stuff, right. Let's get us um, some sort of nice-ish looking block. Maybe some glass. Uh, no, actual glass, not panes. Oh. I had an inkling, but I wasn't sure. But yeah. <laughs> but no, but yeah. But, oh, dear God. Oh, now you rain. Now you rain. Thanks very much. Let's have a look. Is that... Wow. I don't think anything got destroyed, though. I mean, other than the trees <laughs> and all that. Mm. Well, we'll let that, we'll let that go. It'll be fine. So, maybe... Maybe that's the only spot it could deploy from. It's tense. I think we're safe. I think that was it. I think that literally was it. That was the one spot. Oh, my good God. Okay. All right, good. Well, we have <laughs> we have lava generation, ladies and gentlemen, safe as houses. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Why are you off? Is it because you run out of power? Uh, you shouldn't be. Uh, yeah, ignored. That's fine. Wow. Okay, good. Well, I'm going to turn that on for the minute so it doesn't try and spread anymore. Good. Right. Anyhow, next. <laughs> next, I need some dirt. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Right. Good. We'll get that. And what I'm hoping is we can get the thermal lilies and we'll grab ourselves a sp I'm still shaking a little bit. That was kind of ridiculous. Ah. We'll grab ourselves a spreader and the pot thing. The pot thing, the mana pool. Well, we can get this done and then, <laughs> then I can go and have a cup of tea. <laughs> oh no, I've run out of milk. I can't even do that. Sucks to me. Right, uh, we're going to need a couple of thermal of these. I think I want to put them into... Mm, There's going to be mud blocks. That's kind of disappointing. I could probably just raise them up a level, actually. Uh, a level? Mm -mm -mm. Now, you know what? It's all part of the build, so it's fine. Put that there and that there. And what we're going to want is a collector. Now, I don't want this to go too far, so maybe... Hmm, what do we need to do over there? That's where the clay is going to get made. So maybe we can do something like this. Crazy as it may look, this might be fine. I'm thinking like so. I wonder. I wonder. Let's see if it actually does anything. So if I grab this, where's my wand of cool? There it is. Oh, you're connected to that. You're collecting mana. Yep. And yep. And if I turn you back. <laughs> if I turn you back on, are you going to be alright? So one of those flowers is fueled at the moment. And the other one is going to suck this source block up. Let's have a look. Are you both being fueled? No, this one's the only one that's got little cool particles coming off of it. Oh, there we go. And it's done. It's taken it. Oh, there's my clay block. I have that. And then it should produce more. When we have more, which we don't have more. Oh man, I need to turn the whole system on again. Oh, right, let me... <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what, the other last thing we need is the Clayconia, which I think is downstairs as well. Scumbaggle. Now that was going to go... So we still need the Clayconia as well. And But that can go anywhere relative to this, but I think I want to keep it fairly snug. So if we place the Clayconia there... What I need is Silk Touch. <laughs> place these grass blocks or something, that'd be nice. Okay, this is working. Oh, we've got a little bit more lava has been generated. But neither one of them are using it, but it's also not burning everything in the world, so that's cool. Ah, let's see how much lava this has made. Okay. Okay. How much lava? How much mana? It is working, though. It is working well. That's cool. So we have lava-based... <laughs> My God, lava-based power generation. Hurrah! Put the Clayconia there, and then all we need is a method for pulling these guys out. Whoops. Not like that. Pulling these guys out and placing them in the world, which I think is going to be pretty simple now. So let me finish that up, and I'll be right back to finish this episode for now. 
Well, alrighty, there we go. What a system. It's fully functional. Oh, you just saw some lava getting eaten up and some clay getting made. So, uh, yeah, what I did in the end, we've got the clay conia down here. I really must get some grass blocks, actually. I want to see if someone's got some silk touch available. We shall see. So this is all working fine. <laughs> no, no, really. Uh, so that's now... Uh, oh, is it just sucking up? I say this is all working fine. I'm sure if space in inventory, send a redstone signal. There's so space in this inventory. I wonder which one it's... Hmm. Well, now that's curious. Why is that? I'm sure that should work. Anyhow, that aside. Uh, so this is producing, supposed to be producing lava anyhow, rah, rah, rah. Uh, it is getting sucked up, it's getting converted into mana. The Claconia is using it. And over here, the new bit... Um, we have two iron gates, although excessively this doesn't need to be an iron gate and this doesn't need to be a blue signal, but I thought let's use blue because that's what I had to hand. Um, now this is cool, we've got a redstone signal, send a blue pipe signal, but also if the pipe is empty, send a blue s single blue pipe signal, sorry. So what it means is it turns off as it's traversing and as soon as it deploys it, it goes, oh, I've got nothing left, and then this goes, sends a signal, sends it over to this guy and it just says a single pulse please. So once again, dang it, once again... <laughs> It's just doing one at a time, and we can control it using this. So if we don't want any more, we'll just turn it off, and it won't request another one. Pretty sweet, but we'll turn it on for the minute, because we need to. So there we go. Again, the clay production is up. We've got the independent mana system flowing for it as well, and we have a single Ignis Extruder, supposedly. God damn it. I don't know. Oh, actually, I think I know what's happened here. Hang on. No, there's power. You've got power and everything. Why are you not asking for a new piece? You piece why that's annoying let's grab that and place it back on there and see what happens if i make it a new one we go you oh why has that become disconnected <laughs> that's interesting i don't have another gold pipe this is very peculiar peeps i don't know what's going on here let's quickly chip that off completely there we go put you back on oh you know what it is i'm a muppet it's that that's what we need I need to allow input from that side. Ha! Sucker! There we go. That should help. And we need a little bit of red white pipe wiring on here. Do that. Whack that on there and say when there's space in inventory. Send a red pipe signal. There we go. Fixed. Hoorah. Oh weird. I must have reset that at some point. So in and out. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. And it is fully automated. Hooray! All of one block as well, which I really like. We have 11 stacks of... Um, cobblestone to go so I think I think this is going to work for the time being I can just let this run and it should as long as it's got power maintain itself oh that's the other thing just before I end this episode we didn't get onto the bit I wanted to do but can you blame me good gods we've had loads of fun just building this um, yes the power is now on an independent system so it goes down and what we actually have now is a connection that preempts the other one so this now controls all the power at the top and this now controls whether or not I activate the lasers Lasers on and off, power to the top on and off. So there we go, and it's not, well, I keep saying it's not too much of a drain, but it does seem to be maxing out the connection, like, every couple of seconds, which is interesting. So, yeah, that's cool. There might be another episode really, really soon, because I want to get on with the clay production side. So we shall see, but I've also got another Buildcraft 6 to do, so keep you posted on that. Um, there we go, peeps. I hope you enjoyed it. It's freaking cool, actually. I am digging the machinery around here. It kills everybody's frames, but... That's only when that's on, really. At the moment, it seems to be behaving more or less okay. A little bit skittish, but not terrible. Yeah, that's cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. I've had a lot of fun. Again, loving the buildcraftness and the machininess, as always. And digging Britannia like heck. Yeah, this is cool. We should have plenty of mana being produced now. And it should easily keep up with the Claconia, as far as I can see. So that's really, really cool. Good stuff. Right, on that note, one last piece of lava. It's safe, I promise you. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see you here next time. Cheers.